that line if you haven't noticed. That continues that line. If you look at it also, symmetry, we also have a triangle. We have this triangle. We have this triangle. We have this triangle of red. We have this triangle of yellow. We have a circle of chartreuse, triangle of lavender. So we're working in shapes. That's what we're doing. It's sort of like, I, you know, when I look back at my notes from high school in, in physics and in chemistry, I looked at my doodles, and they're all abstracts of colors and spaces and circles and angles. And, and as I look back and I self-evaluate, where does my design style come from? And it's that sense of balance of just filling in with different shapes and filling that balance. So I say, it's hard for me to, do I plan this? Yeah, I know what I'm going to do. And we have a, a but, but when I'm doing it, the flowers will tell you where they want to go and fill it. So now we have those lines. We've got that palette set. Let, let's get a pop in there. And the sunflower, I thought, you know what? These are going to pop. They've got the brown in the center, and they will last, and they will last, and they will last. Notice also, for those that love sunflowers, great value. They retail at about $250 to $3 a stem. When you buy them by bulk, they're even less. And when you buy here, anything you buy loses half off retail price. So if a flower is priced at $4, you pay $2 wrapped up out the door. Okay. So these, when you process, notice there's no foliage on them. We take all the foliage off the sunflower because we want all the water going to the blossom. Okay, so anytime you do that, that will help keep these fresh. And as you put these in water, these will start going up and doing some fun stuff. They really, really fresh. These will last for weeks. I like looking at it. And again, in nature, usually, which looks more natural? The big one on top or the big one on the bottom? Exactly, it's already new. You already knew that principle of balance there, didn't you? Natural has this one up on top. What we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to take these and we're going to sort of shadow them in. Little one on top, big one on the bottom, and use, you know what, instead of taking that, I got a couple of choices and I don't know which one I'm going to do. I might, I might put that right over here, I'll look at it and see, maybe I want that yellow right here. And that'll carry that yellow line through. I don't know. Or maybe I'll look at it and go, well, maybe I want to emphasize that yellow right there. You know what? I think from looking at that with that brown center, I'm going to continue that yellow line right through. So again, nice cut. And sunflowers, I don't want them to go like this. Boo! <laughs> okay, I know they're a little obtrusive sometimes. They, what the, what are you looking at? <laughs> you know, I, I like putting them in at an angle, so it will draw your attention to them facing the heavens. Okay, I don't like them looking like that at me all the time. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. It just sort of depends what we want to do. Again, don't be afraid to change the angle. Every flower, especially daisies. They don't have to be looking at you. You can use them like this, and that draws a little bit more interest to it. Look how less obtrusive that is for a big flower. Herber daisies, too, same way. They don't all have to be facing you. You can use them sideways and using that, that sort of that horizontal feel to stack them. So in this one, I think, you know what? I've got the natural little green that left a nice little space in there. I can put that stem right into the foam. This big stem, so I'm going to hold the back side. Get a good insertion. Right into the foam. Okay. Then the second one. That one. This little angle coming up just like that. See, it'll continue that line of yellow up, up through the bouquet. Okay, then I'll come back through. That looks really pretty as it is. But now, okay, I've got the lines, and I'm just going to come back in. These look like little sunflowers. I love them. 
great daisy palm. And notice, again, I'm not gonna cut each one off right now. And I know I'm not gonna use, I don't wanna bring that yellow line all the way out here. Could I? Yeah, but I don't want to on this bouquet. So I know I'm, I'm gonna use them short, so I just broke them off. Then I get them to a usable size, and I'll just come in, and I'll reinforce that line Grouping little mini sunflowers. We have a sunflower family here. Nice and happy. But I'm not a turkey. <laughs> and notice how some are going really, really in close to the oasis. That principle is depth and design. You want your eye to move in and out of the bouquet. In and out. Okay, and you, all of you have really good depth in your bouquets. So you're doing wonderful on that. Then I'll take these cushion palms. I'll come back here to the back side. Again, this reminds me of this a little bit darker. Notice what else do we have in the start? The safari sunset. So I'll help reestablish those lines. I'm going to use these big ones right down low. Used to be you had to use leather for our baby's breath to put in there. Ah, these daisies, very, very realistically, very fair priced, and they last a lot longer. And you can put them down in the bouquet like that, and it looks like you're just painting with that color. And people will go into that like like you did with those carnations. Are those really carnations? Are those really chrysanthemums? And you look at it and it makes you go look at them. You go, oh yeah, they are, aren't they? That's really cool. Again, starting in low, working up. We go. So, if you have space in the oasis, that's how you cover it up. Come back on the back side to balance those off. Swing this back around. Come in low. Now you don't see that oasis that was there. We just covered it up, and I'll go right through the hydrangea with the foam. Right through into the foam, you can fill it with the stem. Instead of having leather fern and slough and different foliages, that color it just makes the bouquets just come alive. Okay. And you know, what do we got? We got some butterscotch here. And cornucopias by the name, you know, full horn, cornucopia overflowing. We want it to feel <coughs> full. But remember, there's a spot when too much is just too much. No, like this, like think of it, like the beers, when you're drinking, it too much, it's just too much. Sometimes you can put too many flowers in a bouquet. No one to quit. For us, in the retail spot, it's how much money do we have? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, like I said, I wasn't sure until we started putting the bouquets how many daisies to do. And I wanted to give you a supply of you know, different types of colors to use. What about so, that long, sweat stuff? Like the broom corn, we are going to oh. add that really, really quick. And what I'm going to do to the broom corn, let me round up the color really quick. Good call, thank you. This is a good section for, for Rob here. We got about two minutes left for our film. Um, broom corn. Instead, you know, we don't want to just stick that whole thing in there. So we're sharing this. I, I gave four of these out, so you'll split, and you may not even use the whole two stems, but just take it and, and peel it off. You notice I've already peeled some off of that. Okay? Again, fresh cut, and 
And that line, for those that were wondering, right down into that front where that glad was, right down into there. Okay? There we go. The next step to fill in, if you look at it, we have a little bit of plastic showing. We'll take some Spanish moss and tuck in there, and you won't see any of that. That's the final, final thing. So there we go. So at this point, when you know fine tune, if you see a couple of holes, you can you know fill them in, and we'll go from there. Get the Spanish moss added to it, and we'll have a finished product.